Hey guys, Chris Fix here, and today I'm gonna show you how to replace a clutch in your car or your truck. Now the reason why I'm replacing the clutch is, well, I had to lower my transmission because the throw out bearing, also known as the release bearing, is shot. Look at how much play there is in there. It's just in pieces. So that's junk and needs to get replaced. Now while I'm in there, I might as well replace these parts as well. So in this video, we're going to be replacing the clutch, we're going to be replacing the pressure plate, I'm going to be replacing my flywheel. You don't necessarily have to replace yours, you could get it resurfaced. It's like resurfacing a brake rotor when you replace the brake pads. But in this case, I have a nice brand new aluminum flywheel. It's lightweight. I'll show you the difference between this one and the stock one. And since I use my car on the track, a nice aluminum one, less rotational mass, way better. I'll also be replacing the throwout bearing and the pilot bearing, as well as the rear main seal. Now, if your car has an oil leak where the engine and transmission meet, odds are your rear main seal is bad. And in order to get to that, you need to drop the entire transmission. So, few bucks for the seal, you might as well do it as preventative maintenance. And finally, we're putting in a new clutch fork and I'm gonna put a new clutch cable in. And the best part is all this stuff is gonna be done at home using common tools. Here's everything you need, it's that simple. So after watching this video, whether you need to replace the rear main seal in your car or truck, or you need to put a new clutch in, maybe you wanna upgrade your flywheel, whatever it is, I'm gonna be covering everything that you need to know so you could do this at home yourself. Now I do wanna thank Advanced Auto Parts for sending me out all these new parts and supporting the video. That way I could show you guys how to do this. And with that said, I'll link all the parts and tools in the description so you can easily find them. And we're ready to get started. So the first thing that you need to do is to lower your transmission and remove it from the vehicle. Now I have an entire video on how to do this that goes in depth and I'll link that in the description so you could check that one out. But just as an overview, the first thing we need to do is to go into the car and remove the shifter. Then go under the car and unbolt the exhaust. Then we'll drain the transmission fluid. We'll remove the drive shaft and remove the starter. And finally, unbolt the transmission and the transmission will slide out and down so we could remove it from under the car. All right, and with that transmission removed, now we could go under the vehicle and remove the clutch. Now it's important that you wear eye protection and a dust mask because that clutch dust is bad to breathe in. So let's get that on and head under the car. So the first thing we're gonna do is remove this pressure plate, which sandwiches the clutch against the flywheel and holds it in. The pressure plate is held in by six bolts around the perimeter and it's screwed into the flywheel. And before we remove the bolts, I like to spray down the clutch with water to get the dust wet, which makes it less likely to get airborne and you won't breathe it in. With that sprayed down, now let's remove the six bolts holding the pressure plate on the flywheel. And as you can see, when I go to loosen this, the flywheel just spins because nothing is holding it. So a simple trick is to grab a wood block and wedge it between the flywheel and the body of the car, like so. That prevents the flywheel from spinning, so you could easily remove the bolts holding the pressure plate in. I recommend not using air tools when removing these bolts because it'll just blow the clutch dust around and you're gonna breathe that in. Instead, use an electric impact gun or as you can see, hand tools work perfectly fine. Now let's remove this piece of wood and unscrew the last bolt. And since it is the last bolt, hold that pressure plate with your other hand so it won't just fall when you unscrew the bolt all the way. Now grab the clutch and pressure plate from the middle and pull it off the flywheel. Just be careful because it's a lot heavier than you would think. All right, and it is that simple to remove a clutch and pressure plate. And now that it's removed, we can move on to our next step. I am gonna come back and show you the differences between the stock clutch and the aftermarket clutch and talk a little bit about that. But the next thing we need to do is remove the stock pilot bearing. This is what the transmission input shaft goes into and spins, it holds it in place on the crankshaft. So it's important that we replace this as preventative maintenance. And to do that, there are two different methods. The first method is to use a pilot bearing removal tool like this. Now most of us won't have this so you can rent this for free at your local advanced auto parts. But let's just say you can't get this tool for whatever reason. The second method is to use bread and water or grease. Grease is thicker so it works a little better. So let me show you both methods on removing the pilot bearing. So the pilot bearing is located right here in the middle of the flywheel. It's pressed in, so we're gonna have to pull it out. And that's where our pilot bearing tool is gonna come in handy. It has two hooks on the end, it goes into the pilot bearing, it opens up like that and it grabs onto the pilot bearing so we could pull it out. And I like doing this before we replace the flywheel because if the tool slips or something happens and we gouge the flywheel, well it has to get resurfaced or we have to replace it, so that's okay. But if our good flywheel was on here or a resurfaced one was on here and we gouge it, well now we have a problem. So to use the tool, insert it into the pilot bearing and tighten down the threaded rod by hand until you can't tighten it down anymore. Make sure you get this as tight as possible because you want this to spread the hooks out and grab onto that bearing. Next, get a wrench and tighten down the nut 
which is going to cause the tool to pull on the bearing. And if you watch the bearing, you can see it get pulled outwards as I turn the wrench. And there we go. You can see how the tool holds the pilot bearing in and grabs onto it so we can pull it out. And one last quick tip with this puller, you want to make sure that you're straight on. You don't want to pull at an angle. You don't want to pull it when it's cocked to the side a little bit. It has to be straight on top of that bearing and pulling straight out. Otherwise, it won't work right. So now you've seen the puller method nice and simple. Let me show you the other method just in case you can't get yourself one of these pullers. And to show you the other method, I'm going to install a new pilot bearing. I bought two just so I could show you this method. So I'm going to quickly clean out the bore so we have a clean surface to install the new bearing into. And I'll cover the installation in detail in a second. But for now, just carefully tap the bearing in. Now for the second method, you want to get grease and pump it into the bearing hole. And you want to keep pumping grease into the middle of the pilot bearing until the whole thing is filled with grease. And once the grease starts coming out, then we could get some bread and you're just going to shove the bread in there. And what that does is that's going to just help seal that grease in. Now you could grab an extension or a metal dowel, anything that you have that's going to fit in the pilot bearing nice and tight. It shouldn't be so tight that it's stuck on the pilot bearing. The pilot bearing should be able to move out because what we're going to do is we're going to push this grease and bread in, which is going to force the pilot bearing out. So you need to find something that fits inside the diameter that's a nice tight fit, but not too tight. So now all we need to do is to hammer the extension to force the grease and bread into the hole. Then add more grease into the hole and again, hammer that extension, which is creating hydraulic pressure, which will hopefully force that bearing out. And one more time, add more grease and more bread and hammer it in there. And if you look, you can see the pressure starting to move the bearing outwards. So just a few more hits, almost there, and beautiful, the bearing pops right out. And you can see how the grease and bread mixture that you hammer in forces the bearing out. So there you go, now you know both methods on removing the pilot bearing, the puller method and the grease and bread method. Now let's install the new bearing. But before we do that, we have to clean out the hole the bearing presses into. So spray a little bit of brake cleaner in there and wipe away all the dirt and grease. And with that hole cleaned, now we can install our brand new pilot bearing. We don't need to lubricate anything inside there. We want this to go in dry. Now we're gonna hammer the pilot bearing in and I like to use a socket that fits right on the outside edge of the pilot bearing. We don't wanna hammer the inside edge because that'll damage the bearing. So this goes right over the outside and we could press it right in. So with the bearing in place, gently tap the socket to evenly push the bearing in. After a few taps, stop and make sure the bearing is going in straight and not going in at an angle. And this looks good, so hammer it in the rest of the way until the bearing bottoms out. Good, and that's how you install a pilot bearing. Next, we could remove the six bolts holding in the flywheel. And just like before, when I go to loosen the bolt, the flywheel's just going to spin. So I'm going to show you a different trick this time, using a transmission bolt that threads into the engine and a pressure plate bolt that threads into the flywheel. And then grab a wrench and put it over one of the bolts and then turn the flywheel until the box end of the wrench wedges against the other bolt to hold the flywheel in place. Now we can remove the bolts. Actually, we're gonna need some more leverage because these are tight. So grab a breaker bar and that's a lot easier. Then we could unscrew the bolt the rest of the way by hand. Good. Now we could follow that exact same process for the rest of the bolts, breaking it free with the breaker bar and then unscrewing it the rest of the way by hand. Finally, break that last bolt free, but don't unscrew it all the way. Remove this wrench and then we want to loosen the bolt about halfway. Then grab a pry bar and pry the flywheel apart from the engine because sometimes this could get stuck on there pretty good. And that last bolt we left on there prevents the flywheel from falling off. But now we could remove the bolt the rest of the way and be prepared because flywheels are pretty heavy. You're not going to want to drop this on yourself. Good, and now all we have left to do is pry the separator plate off like so. And with the flywheel removed, now we're on the last thing that we need to replace before we start reinstalling everything. And that is replacing the rear main seal. So if you're under your car and you see a leak between the engine and the transmission, that oil is probably coming from a worn out rear main seal. It's a common problem on many higher mileage cars. And it's only a pain to fix because you have to remove your transmission, your clutch, your flywheel, all the stuff you just saw me remove just to replace this cheap part. And that is why we're going to be doing a little bit of preventative maintenance and we'll be replacing the rear main seal right now. Now on many cars, to get the rear main seal out, all you have to do is use something like a dental pick or a flathead screwdriver, get behind the rear main seal, making sure you don't scratch either surface here. You get behind it and then you pop it out. And then you put the new seal in and lightly tap it in so it's flush with the engine. Now in this case, there's eight bolts holding in this rear main seal cover. 
So first, let's spray down the area with some brake cleaner and make sure the area is clean before we remove the cover. And with that clean, we can remove the eight bolts holding on this cover. There are six bolts on the face of the cover that come right out, and then there are two oil pan bolts at the bottom of the cover that need to come out as well. With the bolts removed, we could pull the cover off. And this is stuck on there pretty good, so I'm gonna use two pry bars to evenly pull the cover off. Good, now it should come right off. Now you can actually see the rear main seal. It's this piece right back here. In front of the seal is a seal retainer that needs to come out. And when you're removing the seal retainer, make sure you do not scratch the crankshaft. If you scratch the crankshaft, it's gonna leak oil, and that wouldn't be good. So I like to get a flathead screwdriver, or in this case, a pry bar works perfectly. Just lean it against the oil pan and carefully pry at the seal. Work your way around the seal so we could pop it off the crank like that. Perfect, and that's how you remove the seal. Now we could go and slide the rear main seal off and there you go, that's all there is to it. And with that, we are finished with our disassembly. The rest is a piece of cake. So we removed our clutch and pressure plate. We removed and replaced our old pilot bearing. We removed our old flywheel. And finally, we removed our old rear main seal. So now the next step is to replace the seal. And let me show you how to do that. And before we install our brand new rear main seal, the first thing we need to do is get this surface clean and prepped. So I like to use a tray so I don't get everything all messy. And we're gonna spray this down with brake cleaner. Now you might be tempted to use a metal gasket scraper like this to clean the surface, but don't. This is aluminum, this is steel, this will easily gouge into this by mistake. And if you get a gouge into that, you'll cause an oil leak. Instead, I have two alternatives. Use a plastic scraper, or I like to get a sponge with the abrasive side and use that to remove all the gunk. And it's important to clean the surface, so when we reinstall it, there won't be any oil leaks. So work your way around the entire gasket surface and then wipe it clean. Now we need to clean the surface that the rear main seal sits against so that it won't leak. Again, use the abrasive end of a sponge and work your way around the entire bore, making sure it's clean and smooth. Perfect, and with that surface clean and smooth all the way around, our rear main seal is gonna sit in there and it's not gonna leak. So we got that surface clean and we got our outside surface clean here. Now let's go and install our brand new rear main seal. So find a nice solid surface that you could hammer on and when installing the new rear main seal, Make sure you install it in the correct direction. There's a flat side here. This flat side is supposed to go on the outside. It's supposed to face outside towards the flywheel. And this ridge side, this open side here, is supposed to be on the inside towards the engine. Now our new rear main seal has a protective casing, which we're gonna use when we're installing it against the engine. But for now, you could remove it, and you just wanna line it up just like that. And make sure that you read the directions that come with the seal. In this case, we have a PTFE seal. This is a high quality seal, and it's supposed to go in dry. Some rear main seals, you're supposed to oil before you put it in. But this one goes in dry, so just line it up. And then I like to use a flat piece of metal so that we can hammer it in evenly. So work your way around the seal, hammering it in so it's flush with the case surface. Beautiful. So once your rear main seal is level with the back of this case, you can see it's completely flush. The rear main seal is in and we're ready to go and install this. Now under the car, we wanna clean off the entire gasket surface on the engine as well. And to prevent debris from getting into the oil pan, cover it with a rag, and then we could spray it all down with brake cleaner. Again, use the abrasive side of a sponge to clean off the gasket surface so it's smooth and clean. Next, wipe down the surface with a clean towel to remove any oils. And finally, we wanna clean the crankshaft surface. So spray it down with some brake cleaner, rub it down to make it smooth and clean, and wipe it off with a clean towel. Beautiful. All right, with the gasket surface completely smooth and clean, don't worry about that brown staining that's in the metal from the oil. That's not gonna cause an oil leak or anything. That's completely fine. The surface is smooth and it's cleaned. So with that surface smooth and clean, and with our crank surface smooth and clean, now we could grab our RTV. This is specifically made for maximum oil resistance because this gasket is gonna get a lot of oil on it. So we're gonna start in the corner here and lay a bead of RTV all the way around the gasket surface. We wanna stay on the inside of the bolt holes so we don't have any oil leaks. And once we get to the other side, we wanna end at the corner. And even though there's a gasket at the bottom, I'm gonna put a really thin bead of RTV just to ensure that we have zero leaks. Now let's grab the plastic ring that came with the rear main seal and press it onto the crank to help us install the seal. Then grab the cover, and we want this to go on straight so we don't mess up the RTV gasket. So get it in place on the plastic ring and screw some bolts into the cover to keep it from moving side to side. Then we can tap the cover in with a rubber mallet so it slides onto the crankshaft. Perfect. Now let's hand tighten all six screws in a crisscross pattern to lightly sandwich the cover against the RTV. Make sure this is just hand tight. Good. 
And now we can remove this plastic install piece. This piece made it really simple to install the rear main seal without the inside edge folding in or getting pinched. It's important that the inside edge here doesn't fold in like that and then you have a spot that the oil could seep out. So this tool which comes with the new rear main seal is really helpful. So with the cover and rear main seal installed, all the bolts are hand tightened just enough to lightly squeeze out that RTV. Now we're going to let this dry for about an hour. An hour later, we want to go back and torque each bolt down in a crisscross pattern to 89 inch pounds. Not foot pounds, inch pounds. Then we could tighten the two bottom oil pan bolts and torque them down to 15 foot pounds and then turn the wrench an extra 60 degrees. Now we could finally install our rear main seal retainer, also known as an oil slinger, but this one that we removed is bent up, so we need to use a new one. You can see the new one's nice and straight, and this one's going to go in with the flat side towards the rear main seal. So we're just going to lightly tap the seal into place so that's even around the crank. And now with a punch, we're again lightly going to tap it in place so it's evenly pushed a little bit into the cover. You don't want to push it too far and knock the rear main seal out. But that looks perfect. And there we go. That is how you install a rear main seal. Very simple. A few extra minutes, a couple extra bucks, and it's totally worth it for preventative maintenance. Now let's go and install our flywheel. All right, out with the old heavy stock flywheel and in with the brand new lightweight aluminum flywheel. This thing is going to be awesome. But you don't necessarily need to get a brand new flywheel. You can resurface your old flywheel. Just call your local machine shop or mechanic, ask them if they resurface flywheels. It's usually pretty inexpensive, which is good. All you need to do is make sure that your flywheel teeth are not chipped or cracked or missing. You also want to run your fingernail across the flywheel surface and make sure there's no deep grooves. Little grooves right there and right there on the edge where the clutch sits is okay, but anything really deep might not be good. Also, you want to look for any discoloration. You see that rainbow discoloration there? If you see that along the entire area that the clutch sits, that means the clutch overheated this flywheel. That little spot isn't a big deal. That could have been from somebody getting the bolts off and using a torch. This is the original Ford flywheel, so I wouldn't be surprised. And the last thing you want to look for are any cracks, almost like a dry lake bed, right in this clutch area on the flywheel. In this case, this flywheel looks really good. So I can get it resurfaced, but I'm not going to. Instead, I drift this car, take it to the track, so I'm going all out, high performance, lightweight aluminum flywheel. Wait till you see the difference and weight. I have a scale. I'm going to show you the difference. Now the downside is it is going to take a little bit of getting used to when you're driving this on the street. Getting into first gear, you're really going to have to feather the clutch. You're going to have to slip it a lot more than with the heavy stock one. But the positives greatly outweigh the negatives. The lighter flywheel, less rotational mass, means that the engine isn't working as hard to spin this up. So it's able to spin up the flywheel quicker so your RPMs could go up quicker, which means you're going to be in the power band quicker. That's a good thing. Also, it's going to use a lot less power to spin this up, so you're freeing up horsepower which is a good thing and just to give you an idea let's weigh these flywheels and see how much weight savings we have the stock flywheel weighs about 21 and a half pounds and the aluminum flywheel weighs about 12 pounds so that's a weight savings of nine and a half almost 10 pounds and for rotational mass that is a lot of weight savings it's gonna make a big difference now we do need to hammer in three locator pins that help us install the pressure plate so place the pin in the hole and tap it until it bottoms out and do the same for the other pins. So with our three pins installed, now let's go and install the flywheel. Grab some 800 grit sandpaper or the abrasive end of a sponge and sand down the edge where the transmission meets the motor. We don't want any corrosion, dirt, or grease causing a little bump and then the transmission doesn't seat completely flat. Then we could install the separator plate, which I also cleaned up and made smooth. And the last thing is to clean the surface where the flywheel sits. Again, you want this surface to be clean and smooth. If there's dirt or rust on this surface, the flywheel could wobble and cause vibration while driving. Finally, we could install the flywheel. Now you're able to reuse your old flywheel bolts unless if you have torque to yield bolts. But I'm installing brand new ones for safety because my car sees heavy track use. Now to prepare the flywheel bolts for installation, whether you're using brand new ones or you're reusing the old ones, you want to add a little bit of grease to the bottom of the bolt head. So when we torque it down, there isn't friction which is going to throw off the torque spec. And you don't want to get this grease on the threads. Spread it out, but only on the bottom of the bolt head. Then let's add some medium strength thread locker to the threads like so. And that's the proper way to get your flywheel bolts ready to get tightened down. So now let's install the flywheel. Just get it on the crankshaft and turn it until all the bolt holes line up. Then hand tighten all six flywheel bolts. Next, tighten a pressure plate bolt onto the flywheel and tighten a transmission bolt into the engine 
and use the wrench trick I showed you before to keep the flywheel from turning. Now we can torque down the bolts to 64 foot pounds and I'm gonna mark each bolt so I know it's been torqued. So torque down the bolts in a crisscross pattern so the flywheel gets evenly tightened to the crankshaft. And never use an impact gun to tighten down a flywheel because you could easily warp it. So with the flywheel installed, now let's go get our new clutch. So out with the old clutch and pressure plate and in with the brand new one. Now how you can tell your old clutch is worn out is by looking at the rivets. The clutch material should be above the rivets. The rivets shouldn't be flush with or sticking out of the clutch material. If it is, it'll contact the flywheel and that means your clutch is no good. In this case, you can see we have plenty of clutch material over the rivets, so this clutch is good. It's also a good idea to check all the springs, make sure there's no play in here and make sure there's no play in the spline section and there isn't. If we wanted to, we could totally reuse this clutch but I'm not going to, I have a brand new one to install. As for the pressure plate, just like the flywheel, run your nail across the surface, there shouldn't be any grooves. You also wanna check the springs on the pressure plate. You can see this is where the throwout bearing sits. You wanna make sure all the springs are level and there aren't any grooves. I can see some grooves right here. So if any of those springs are grooved or if they're bent or missing, you definitely need to replace this. Now anytime I remove a transmission, even if it's just to replace a throwout bearing like in this transmission, if we're not on a budget, I like to replace as many parts as possible as you've seen. And in this case, I'm going with a brand new Zoom Performance clutch. This is rated to 400 horsepower, which will be perfect for when I install the supercharger in the drift stand. Now, if you notice, I am not touching this clutch with these dirty, greasy gloves. You don't want to get any grease on the clutch surface because that'll cause it to slip and overheat and you just did all this work for nothing. And speaking of grease, there is grease from the factory, Cosmoline grease, on this surface of the pressure plate, so we need to clean that off. So now's a good time to either wash your hands or change out your gloves, and that's exactly what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna change these out for nice fresh ones. And with new gloves on, now we could clean the surface. Grab our brake cleaner and spray down the entire surface of our pressure plate. Then get a towel and clean all that grease off. Good, so now we can put our clutch on here. We wanna grab our clutch alignment tool and let's go install this. Now just like the pressure plate, we need to clean the grease off the surface of the flywheel before we install the clutch. Otherwise the clutch could get grease on it and slip. And with the flywheel clean, we are ready to install our clutch. Now I have all my bolts ready to go right here with thread locker on them. I have our clutch alignment tool ready to go, so let's get that clutch in. Now you wanna make sure that the clutch is in the proper direction. You have a flat side to the clutch and then you have a raised side to the clutch. The raised side always goes into the pressure plate and the flat side always goes up against the flywheel. Many clutches even have stickers on them. It says FW side or flywheel side to remind you that this side goes towards the flywheel. And one last thing, you wanna grab your clutch alignment tool and I have a trick which is gonna help us later. Get a marker or a pen and we just wanna draw a line on the top here and you'll see how this helps us later on when we go and install the transmission. It makes it a lot easier. So now grab the clutch alignment tool. Let's grab our clutch flat side towards the flywheel. Let's spline this so that's towards the top like that and let's get this installed. So we want the end of the alignment tool to go all the way into the pilot bearing and that'll hold the clutch in the middle for us. Then grab the pressure plate and we wanna align this onto the studs we hammered into the flywheel before. Now get the six bolts that hold in the pressure plate hand tightened and I do have medium strength thread locker on each of these bolts. So with all the bolts in, now let's torque them down to 24 foot pounds. And if the flywheel spins, you should be able to just hold it in place by hand like that and now we could finish torquing down the bolts in a crisscross pattern. And finally, we could remove the clutch alignment tool. And now the clutch and pressure plate are installed into the flywheel. So now let's install the new throwout bearing into the transmission. And to install the new throwout bearing, first we need to remove the old one. So pull the clutch fork down and slide it off the input shaft like so. I'm also gonna replace this worn pivot stud. So get a deep socket and break that loose and then remove it the rest of the way by hand. And with the old clutch fork, throwout bearing, and pivot stud removed, check this out. This throwout bearing is completely shot. Not only that, this is supposed to be around the input shaft on the transmission, but the throwout bearing's so bad, this is seized to it, and that is not coming off. So that's why you don't want to drive around with a bad throwout bearing. Also, if you take a look at the pivot stud, here's what a new pivot stud looks like, and that's the old one. You can see the wear on it. So because we drove around with a bad throwout bearing, everything here needs to get replaced. So new pivot stud new clutch fork, and of course, a new throwout bearing. And before we slide our throwout bearing into position, we need to lubricate all the points that the throwout bearing touches. I'm gonna to be using the included spline lubricant, but you could also use high temperature grease. And just get a light coat of grease on the two contact points on this side, and on the contact points and spring on the back of the clutch fork. 
So let me show you how to install the new throwout bearing into the clutch fork. And this is actually something a lot of people mess up on because there's a spring here and on the back of this throwout bearing is a collar. The spring has to be on the inside of the collar. So make sure you hold the spring down just like that and slide the throwout bearing in. Perfect. You can see the spring is on the inside of the collar and that is how you install a throwout bearing. So let's go get this installed into the transmission. And before we install any new parts, it's always a good idea to check your input shaft. You want to make sure there's no play. Oh man, that's not good. You see how there's side to side play and up and down play? That means there's too much play in the input shaft bearings all the way in the transmission and the transmission needs a rebuild. So out with the old broken transmission and in with a completely rebuilt one. And this input shaft has no play in it at all. Also, it has the sleeve on top of it so we can install our throwout bearing. And since this is completely rebuilt, we don't have to install a new pivot stud. It has one already. And with the new pivot stud, it's a good idea to use some type of lubricant on it. I like to use anti-seize. You don't want to add a lot, just coat the surface. And since we're lubricating parts, use the included spline lubricant and add a very, very light coat to the splines of the input shaft. Don't load it up with lubricant because when it spins, it could sling the lubricant onto the clutch and cause it to slip. So again, use a very light coat on the splines and on the end where it goes into the pilot bearing. One more place to lubricate is on the input shaft sleeve where the throwout bearing slides back and forth. And again, you only need a light coat. So with everything lubricated, let's get the clutch fork and throwout bearing in place. Make sure the clutch fork snaps into the pivot stud and is free to move back and forth with no resistance. And the last part to lubricate is the face of the throwout bearing because it's in contact with the pressure plate springs, so it's good to have a thin coat of lubricant on there. So there you go, that's everything you want to lubricate with the spline lubricant. If they don't give you spline lubricant with your clutch, you could use a high temperature grease. But again, you only want a light coat to prevent that sling from getting on your clutch. Now one last thing, remember when we installed the clutch, I told you to draw a line on the top of the clutch alignment tool so it's facing upwards? Well the reason why I told you to draw that line is because this is going to help us align the splines in our transmission. One of the most difficult parts of this whole job is getting the transmission to align with the clutch when we install it. So with this line here, we know we have to get a spline straight up. So let's turn this transmission like that. Goodness, see this spline right there? Now that is level with that spline. That's exactly how it's going to go into the clutch. And that's a little trick that makes installing this transmission so much easier. Now we know this input shaft is splined directly into that clutch. So with everything set up properly, now we're all done. The next thing to do is install the transmission. So let's get the transmission under the car, jack it up into place, and because our input shaft is lined up to the clutch, we should be able to just push the transmission right in. Beautiful. And just as a quick overview of the installation, torque down the transmission bolts in a crisscross pattern. Then we're going to add our starter, connect the drive shaft, add transmission fluid, install the exhaust, install the shifter. And now the last thing to install is a brand new clutch cable. What happens is the old clutch cable gets worn out and it stretches, so then you don't get the proper engagement and disengagement of the clutch. A new cable takes a few minutes to put in. It's really simple, so let me go show you how. And we're going to start off by removing the old clutch cable, so we're going to start in the interior over at the pedal assembly under the dash. And you can see when you press on the clutch, it pulls on the clutch cable right there. So to remove the cable is simple. Just get some slack in the cable and slide the end of the cable out of the assembly just like that. So with the cable removed down there, now we could go follow the cable up into the engine bay where it comes out right here. The cable is held into the firewall by a very small 5mm bolt, so unscrew it all the way and the clutch cable could be removed, and then we could go under the car to remove one more bolt that mounts the cable to the body of the car. So unscrew this bolt, and now we can remove the entire clutch cable. So out with the old, and in with the new. And we wanna start installing the new cable by bolting it into the firewall. Once that's snug, then let's go inside the car and get the cable onto the clutch pedal assembly, and make sure the cable is in the little groove in the plastic piece here so it works properly. Then under the car, we could bolt it into the frame, good, and route the cable to the transmission through the little gap next to the oil pan. Now we could slide the cable into the hole in the transmission and push the retaining clip in to hold the cable in place. Now we need to adjust the clutch cable and clutch fork to make sure that the throwout bearing is pressing against the pressure plate. So thread the cable into the clutch fork, add some medium strength thread locker to the threads, and tighten down the included nut as tight as you could get it by hand. This will put the throwout bearing in contact with the pressure plate, but it won't press on it too hard where it might disengage the clutch. Once that's hand tightened as much as we could get it, there's no play in the clutch fork, so now we could screw on the jam nut all the way. This will prevent vibrations from loosening this up. So get the wrench on the main nut and tighten the jam nut against the main nut 
just like that. So the jam nut holds everything in place. Now we could add the cover and we are done. So that is how simple it is to replace a clutch cable, but not every car has a clutch cable. Many cars like this Honda have a hydraulic clutch, so instead of a clutch cable, there is a slave cylinder, which uses hydraulic pressure, which is similar to your brakes. So when you press on the clutch, it disengages it. When you let off the clutch, it re-engages it. But instead of replacing a clutch cable, what you'd have to do is you would have to bleed the slave cylinder. Just like bleeding the brakes, they have a little bleeder valve here. Go and loosen that up, have somebody press on the clutch, hold it down, close it, and then let go of the clutch. Do that multiple times until all the air is bled out and you have a nice firm pedal. Otherwise, replacing the clutch on a car that has a hydraulic clutch is very similar, but I just wanted to cover this real quick because there are a lot of clutches out there that are hydraulic. So now back to the Mustang. All right, with everything back together and the car back on the ground, now comes the fun part where we go test drive the car to make sure everything is working properly. I also can't wait to see how that lightweight flywheel and heavy duty clutch feels. So clutch in and let's start her up. All right, I'm gonna let the clutch out, good. That feels like it's working properly. I don't hear any weird noises. The clutch is engaging and disengaging properly. So let's go for a ride and see how she runs. Now I can tell already, the lightweight flywheel takes a little more revving to keep the car from stalling in first. But it's not bad. I don't hear any noises. The clutch is disengaging completely when I press the pedal all the way. And when I let off the pedal, it engages completely. So now you just want to drive around town, go through every gear, make sure it's all working as it should and always follow the manufacturer's recommendation for breaking in the new clutch, which is usually driving around for a few hundred miles without beating on it. Drive normally. Don't go and drop the clutch. Don't do a burnout. Don't go racing. Otherwise, you won't break it in properly and it'll wear out quick. And yes, I know, the speedometer is not working on my car. It broke at the last drift event, and I've been waiting to make a video on how to diagnose that problem and show you how to fix it. It's actually really simple. And there you go, that is an in-depth video on how to replace a clutch, pressure plate, flywheel, pilot bearing, throwout bearing, and rear main seal. Basically everything you need to know on doing a proper and thorough clutch replacement. Hopefully the video was helpful. If it was, remember to give it a thumbs up. If you're not a subscriber, consider subscribing for more how-to videos like this. And as always, all the tools and products I used in this video are linked in the description.